Hey guys, and welcome back. This is Chosen Architect, and today we are jumping back into some more of this All the Mods 6 Skyblock. So, I hope you guys are ready. So I know things may seem a little bit different looking, uh, and that's because I'm, I'm kind of trying to remodel this a little bit. I went ahead and went with the Dark Oak. Of course, if you don't know how to do that, you sieve some dirt, and you can get yourself some, uh, some different saplings. So, I have Dark Oak saplings. I have pretty much every sapling at this point. Um, but this kind of this just allows me to add some uh, different variants to this. Now, we still have a very flat platform. And of course, adding verticality to this is going to make things look a little bit nicer. And we're definitely going to do this as we progress through this pack. Uh, but for right now, I think today we should work on uh, getting some other resourceful blocks that is going to allow us to uh, be able to decorate a little bit more. And one of those is a method for getting mossy cobblestone which believe it or not is a block that I would like to have. Um, so to get that, all we need is a, a, a vine that needs to go underneath this. So the best way to get a vine is uh, to grow it from jungle saplings. Jungle saplings have a chance of having vines on them. So if I place four of these here and I shift enough or run, running usually works a little bit faster. We might have the chance of it growing. <laughs> all depends. Bone mill might even work faster. I don't know. There might be something preventing it from growing as well. Um, bone mill should do the trick. Hopefully we can jumpstart this. Is it the crop? Jungle, 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 jungle. Well, that's definitely not getting it to grow. Interesting that it's not growing that way. Let me try this again. Let's uh, place it here. <laughs> oh my gosh. Here I am trying to get this large jungle tree to grow and it's not letting me. I wonder if I just need another area? <laughs> I don't know. Let me see if I can grab, I think I have extra dirt over here actually. Uh, I have some extra dirt just laying around. All right, let's try this. Let's just get a little platform here away from everything. Maybe this will work. There we go. Oh yeah, and look how many vines are growing on this. And all we need is one of those vines. Of course, we can shear the whole thing. And uh, over here, apparently, if we place a vine here, this is gonna jump start some things. Now, I do want to blockade the bottom here so the vine doesn't extend all the way down to the ground. But this is supposed to give us mossy cobble. Okay, I gotta figure out how to get that to work. Okay, maybe I just place a block here, place the pedestal. It's going to be so weird. I mean, maybe the thing is showing it wrong. Maybe it needs to be a block with a piece of mossy on it. I don't know. But it did show that it was like this. Okay. And now that it's like that, if I put this on here, it should generate mossy cobble. Hey, it's generating mossy cobble, which is perfect. All of that for this beautiful tree. And um, yeah, I don't know if there's a chance, by the way, for cocoa beans to spawn on this. There might be, but I don't. I don't know if I've ever encountered cocoa beans spawning on here. If not, I think we have cocoa beans. You can get from sieving. I could be wrong though. Yep, you totally get cocoa beans, by the way, from sieving sand in uh, in this mesh. So, hey, that's something we can do in the future. But it's really nice that we can get mossy cobble this way. Now, this does have a couple of different variants. Um, and this is the one that I really like, is this variant from Quark. And when you mix this with the normal, Things get to looking really, really nice. And uh, I'm gonna enjoy building with some of these materials. So this will be stuff that we're gonna use potentially in the future to create some dungeony looking areas. Um, and also I do need to get some glass because I really like to incorporate glass into the builds like this to just show off the fact that we are in the sky. Like why why, dis, why just not show that we're in the sky and enclose ourselves? I, I don't like to do that. So um, we're definitely gonna be showing that off. But today I think we should, uh, probably look at getting into the auto sieves and hammers. This is gonna be a good way of automating our production of uh, different materials. So for the most part today, I would like to at least be able to get auto hammers set up and get the production um, of gravel and sand and dust all in one setup if we can. Using this platform over here, um, we're gonna need to route power and I think we're also gonna modify the power today, uh, but I think we should be able to set these up, no problem, and I think I have enough iron. The only problem is food, which at this point, I might be able to 
upgrade our food eating issue with a, uh, let's see, gluttony charm. How expensive is the gluttony charm? It requires cookies. So there we go. I mentioned earlier cocoa beans. Yep, we have to apparently sieve sand to get that. And I do have a bit of sand over here that could be sieved. Um, and we could see if we get it from here. Should be able to get some cocoa beans. Potentially, it's a low chance. There's a cocoa bean. Perfect. And all we gotta do is just slap this on a log and uh, we can make sure we grow it. That way we... I don't wanna use the only one I have. That would be not smart. That would not be big brain of me to do. We can take this and grow it and there we go. Now we have several cocoa beans. Okay, so we should be able to totally make this. So with the golden apple and then this, we now have a gluttony charm. Perfect, and we should be able to put that into our charm slot. It goes all the way at the bottom, if I believe. All the way to the bottom, down to the charm slot. Hey, look, there's two charm slots. I thought there was only one before. Maybe that was added. That's pretty cool. Now we should be able to eat so much faster. It's uh, it's quite unbelievable. And um, cookies are going to be a pretty decent resource. Now, the mod in here, um, I believe it's the... Um, Oh, the, the Spice of Light Life Carrot Edition is in here, which means uh, the more food we eat, the more food types we eat, uh, the more health bar or the more health we'll inevitably get. So uh, you want to be trying your best to eat as much as possible uh, or vary your foods and just just about try everything if you can. Um, it's going to help you overall increase. I think after 10 or so different foods, um, you will gain a half a heart or a whole heart. I don't I don't remember what the, the number is, but. It's one of those two. Either way, it's more health, and that's better for everyone, right? All right, so as you can see, I did change up my uh, my inventory system over here. And I want to explain why it's set up this way. This crafting station is our best early game crafting setup at the moment. We don't have a Plat Energistic setup. We don't have refined storage setup. So I want to keep some of my main crafting supplies in here because this allows me to, like I just did, pop in and just craft the item directly from here instead of like manually placing every single individual item and crafting super slow that way. Um, so this is going to help out. So I have some of my main items in here. Everything we're going to need for crafting things is in here. So hopefully this storage should last us until we get into refined storage and stuff. Now let's take a look at this auto hammer. Um, pretty, pretty simple. Uh, it's going to require a bunch of iron. Now, luckily we do have a good amount of iron. It's also gonna require several diamonds, but luckily for us, we can farm diamonds so quickly now um, that it's not a big deal. Um, and I think what we're gonna need for this setup is we need, I mean, if we think about it, we're gonna take cobblestone and we need to turn it to gravel. That's gonna require one machine. We're also gonna need a setup to turn uh, cobblestone into gravel and then gravel into sand. That's gonna make three machines total now. Then we're gonna need another setup that is going to require three more machines. So in total, we are going to need six auto hammers to take cobblestone, from, to turn cobblestone into gravel, into also sand, and also into dust, and have all three of those materials available to us. So really, we need six of these in total. We totally have enough, but then we need to keep in mind that we are going to need six hammers, six diamond hammers, and then we're also gonna need the power to support this. So I think our lava production is definitely going to need uh, need a boost here soon. So um, good thing we can uh, we we should be able to get those materials made pretty quickly. The dynamos aren't super expensive now that we have an induction smelter. So I think getting this uh, going is going to be pretty fun today. So as you can see, I have these guys now stacked up the way that I was thinking about them in my head, um, and uh, this is going to be how it works. So we're going to have a cobble gin up here that's going to automatically put items into this one. Um, and then the resulting uh, items are going to be gravel, right? Gravel here, up here, cobblestone is going to go into here. That's going to be sending gravel into this, which this is going to crush. And the resulting item is going to be sand. And that one's going to be cobblestone into gravel, gravel into sand, and then gravel or sand into dust. And that is going to be our resulting item there as well. So in return, we should have, uh, we should get uh, uh, cobblestone here or not cobblestone, sorry, gravel here, sand here and dust here all of which we are going to need, and uh, that is gonna provide a nice constant source while we're doing other things. So this will be uh, nice and running. Now, as you can see in my inventory, I've made magmatic dynamos. I got four of them now, which is gonna give us a total of five. And then I also have, or I will have a total of five uh, fired crucibles. Now, I just wanna move this stuff back. That's what I'm gonna end up doing. Also have some pipes. We're gonna be replacing these hoppers. 
And just moving all of this stuff, really. Um, there's nothing here anymore that I am currently really working on other than uh, glass. So I'm free to uh, to move these things around. Why not? Let's go ahead and move all of this. We don't need any of this. It's all going to be a whole bunch of cobblestone. And uh, even the uranium blocks. By the way, I also went ahead and made a magnet. It is super cheap. And if you've gotten an ender pearl at this point, which you don't even need a mob farm for, you just get it from your instone or crushed instone. Um, this right here, super simple to make. And I recommend making it as soon as possible. It is, there is nothing worse than losing an item to the edge here just because you didn't make this cheap iron gold uh, or iron redstone lapis tool. Like this, this thing is definitely worth it. You can turn it on and off as well. It makes a cute little noise. Someone says like a little doorbell. So setting up the cobblestone generator should be pretty simple. I did go ahead and make some tier three cobble gens. I was gonna up it to diamond, but I was thinking like, do we really need like cobble that fast? Maybe not. And if I do, I can go ahead and waste my diamonds when we get to that point. But um, I decided to just go with this standard cobble gen. I think this one's going to be fast enough, at least to provide all of our uh, lovely, lovely fired crucibles. So um, items, we are going to need item pipes that is going to connect to this. And uh, that is going to provide or this cobble gin is going to provide um, all of the items to the back of these. So that way we're not covering the front. I don't think it needs uh, needs to be in any particular like way. So let's hook that up and then uh, we're going to use our wrench to tell it to uh, go ahead and pull out of here. Maybe. Oh, these are fluid pipes. What am I doing? <laughs> we need item pipes. There we go. Item pipes. And there we go. Now it's connected. Um, and this still does need to be set to the extract mode. So set that to extract. And that should start pulling cobblestone and filling it up. And now we have lava. Great. So let's go ahead and get our power pulled out. And that is going to be all of these magmatic dynamos. There we go. We have them nice and set up. I don't know. I mean, there might be an easier way to set these up um, to put, you know, to produce a bit more power or not produce more power and make it more compact. Um, I think I'm going to leave it like this, though. <laughs> Here I am overthinking things like always. Uh, OK. And uh, technically, if you wanted to make this a little bit more server friendly, because the way these pipes work is the only ticking entity, ticking tile entity should be the export over here, so now I've created six or five exports when I could have just made one. Um, but uh, this this is gonna work being a, a single player world. It's not that big of a deal. Now, all of these are gonna get powered. They're gonna be powered exclusively off of these, uh, their own set, I guess. Um, and now we can upgrade them. I do have an upgrade for each one. Let's go ahead and throw the augment in. It's gonna be the same augment that we put in our first one, basically doubling the power that it has and uh, and uses. Go ahead and throw that in there. This one should still have it in there. Perfect. Now all of these are generating or should generate a max of about 80 RF per tick. So pretty decent amount of power here. And I and of course we can always upgrade. Um, we just need the signalium. This is just about ready to go. All we got to do is hook up some power cables to all of them and maybe make a power storage. I think there's a power storage block. Now I've not really messed with this mod too much. This is the RF tools power mod. And uh, this I believe stores power. And uh, it looks like it's not too crazy. We're gonna need four. I mean, it may be a little bit more expensive than some other options that uh, could potentially store a bit more power than this, but hey, it's worth kind of messing around with newer blocks, right? Or at least I would think so. Let's see, we only need one, I think blue dye. And then we need some gold nuggets. Perfect. And uh, I, you know, this series, I want to kind of show more crafting. I think a lot of people really like to to follow these, uh, this let's play or these let's plays and sort of work out how to play these packs. Like I completely want to, uh, to make sure I, I help you guys along. So speaking of power, let's go ahead and grab our other power cables. They kind of be around here somewhere, right? Yeah, there they are. And we're gonna hook this up. Each one of these, of course, are going to pull power. And then right down here in the center, this should be the center of our platform, is where we're going to hook in our buffer. This should tell us, one, how much power is being input into it. Um, as soon as we turn these all on. So we turn all of these to export power. And this should technically start storing power. At least you would think so anyways. So yeah, th my mistake. I need a wrench in order to get it to work. In big letters, it says right here, 
it says right click with a wrench to toggle input output on the sides. So yeah, in that case, let's go ahead and throw this down because it's going to be an okay um, storage buffer for, for all of this. So that should allow input. And as you can see, it is now feeding in and we can see now this does have a input and output max of 250 RF per tick, which I think is, is just about right. Uh, this is transferring. It says 256 FE every tick which of course these can be upgraded um, to increase that later on. But yeah, I think we're just pushing exactly what we need. And look at that, it's filling up quite fast. And that's gonna be a nice little storage buffer for getting this up and running. So to get the power from over here all the way over here, I'm gonna have to do a little bit of uh, underground work. Um, just basically creating myself a little path under here. And uh, that's gonna allow me to connect these cables up. Now I do have, I hope I have enough cables if not, of course, I can always make more. We have plenty of redstone to be able to do that. But yeah, I'm going to have to go all the way over here till I get to the little power area. And I have to make sure I set this to output because if I don't, this power system is not going to work. I believe this is input. That's output. There we go. And the first thing we can do with this setup is hook our cable up and then make sure that we have this set to extract the power. And then I'm just going to run this cable all the way over to the other side. And that's how we're gonna hook our machines up. So if you're doing a little bit of, uh, of work on this, trying to understand what's going on, this power cell is not going to work. This is not working at all. Um, and I did have everything set up. I just think that there's maybe some issues with this interacting with these cables in some way. For some reason it's not working, but if I connect this directly, then my power starts to send to these machines over here. So I was a bit confused as why this wasn't working, but hey, uh, I think there is another power cell, at least one from Thermal Series, that holds a bit more, and we could probably use that instead. Just a little bit more in involved to make. But for right now, I mean, let's go ahead and get this jump started. Like, I'm kind of excited to see this in action and, and actually running. Um, I was thinking, do I want to use cables? I was like, yeah, probably. I mean, why not? Let's go ahead and utilize some of these cables. Um, I could use uh, hoppers. I think hoppers would look pretty good with this as well. Um, but the good thing is, is this cobble gin, we should be able to just set it on the top and it should just automatically send the, uh, the cobblestone into this machine, right? Right? Wrong, apparently. <laughs> apparently I'm really wrong because it doesn't seem to be doing that. Okay, so if I take this cobble gin, because it's supposed to automatically send the items to an adjacent inventory. Doesn't seem like it's wanting to do that. If I pipe the items, will that be better? That is the question. Gonna make this setup a little bit uglier, but hey, transferring four items every 20 ticks. Okay, so that's sending the items and it seems to be sending them at a decent rate. It's not anything crazy out of these pipes, which I don't expect because this isn't even going very fast, but it is working. So that's a bonus, okay. So pretty much everywhere there is a cobblestone block, there's gonna need to be a pipe there. And so yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and get the rest of these uh, piped in. Pretty much the exact same. Pipes go everywhere, make sure you do not forget to turn them into extract mode like that on all of the ones that you can get to. Make sure these are all set to extract. Same for this one up here, extract. And we're also gonna put the cobble gins on each one so they all have their own independent cobble gin so we don't have to worry about an issue there. So yet again, I'm gonna to have to place another cable there and then the cobble gins are just gonna go right on top. Well, that one's turned. I actually don't want that one turned. <laughs> I want them to kind of match and look good from all sides. So my OCD may be kicking in here, but hey, it might be worth it in the end. I think it's gonna look really good once you get this set up. Well, it's not gonna look amazing, but it is gonna look cool. It's gonna have like a cool technical. How How is this turned? Are they all turned that way? Okay, they're all turned that way. Never mind. I was just losing my marbles. Looking at this beast from a distance, oh man, it is super, super satisfying. Now, of course, you can increase this by putting in uh, diamond hammers, I do believe. I think the diamond hammers affect this. Like normal hammers won't work, but I believe diamond will. And it basically gives you more hammers punching on this at once. Like right now there's one hammer. If I make another diamond hammer, let's see, diamond hammer. It will give us two. And then if you put another one, of course, three and so on. 
So yeah, you can see now there's two. And of course, if you throw another one in there, it'll be three. So yeah, it does improve the speed, but it also increases the amount of power, I believe. Oh no, it doesn't increase the power, does it? Seems to be about the same, but it is gonna use durability on this where this is not using durability. So to make that buffer I was talking about, the, it's the redstone flux cell, and I think there's gonna be a, probably a better option, uh, potentially. Uh, for one thing, it does hold 1 million RF and has a max transfer rate of 1,000 RF. Totally beats the other version, so, uh, or the other power source. So let's go ahead and create some of this cured rubber. Right, that's where things get a little bit more complicated, and it's, it's not bad at all, really. Uh, we just need a little bit of vines, which luckily we have. Thank goodness, we have some vines. I'm gonna grab some water, three buckets. Let's go ahead and fill this, and that will get rubber, and then we have to craft this and craft that and craft the, the thing, and then, the, it, yeah, we got to craft none. Then we smelt the tidbits, or the, I mean, sorry, the rubber, and the rubber is going to give us cured rubber. Uh, it's so sad. I used to work in a rubber factory, and um, the fact that I'm doing it in game now is just, it just feels really demeaning. It just, it really does. In a game I love, I'm doing work. Now, one thing I've already made for this project is the Electrum. I seen that I was gonna need it earlier, so I decided to go ahead and make it. Um, I just, I didn't throw it in my, my alloy kiln. I, I did, however, throw it inside of my, not my multi-servo press or my redstone furnace. I, my induction smelter, oh, all right, you caught me. I threw it inside my induction smelter. I've already got it made, so uh, we should be able to make this uh, fairly quick, right? Just toss a few of these items together, just like that, and we have the um, the husk that is going to be the uh, the redstone uh, flex cell. Very nice. We just have to feed it redstone now, apparently. Give it a big old fat redstone block, and now we have a redstone flex cell, so let's hope this works. Let's try this, all right? I'm gonna pop down here. Um, I'm gonna have to pop down here as well. This one's gonna be a little bit harder. Um, how am I gonna actually wrench? You know what, I'm just gonna break that. Uh, we're gonna set that there. And then we need to make sure that this is configured properly. Um, so the top is going to be the input and this is gonna be the output. That should allow that to connect. And then of course I don't have my wrench on me. Let's go back up. <laughs> I love how I'm just like uh, doing this off of the uh, off of a whim. Right. All right. So down here, I need to get this to hook. There we go. That should be connected. And then connect here, but I can't get out. Oh, this is this is where a chest would have come in handy. Why don't I have a chest on me? You know what? We're gonna break out with a chest. Why can't? Why don't I have flight yet, guys? Why? Why haven't you? <laughs> Giving me flight. Okay, let's go ahead, grab a slab. That You know what, a slab might let me get out. Oh boy, here we go, perfect. Slab, let's hope that this works. We break this, get our pipe going, because now this should hopefully send power. There we go, I can get out and cover everything back. Wow, man, things are getting really complicated. All right, so it looks like uh, our power's gone. Um, hmm. This is, a yet again, filling up the other, the bottom. Is this the bottom? Is this the... Oh, man. Does this not work with buffers? Come on. I'm confused now. That's hooked in. The bottom is orange for output. None of these are working. I... <laughs> Explain this to me. Well, if anything, at least we know it holds power. I just don't understand why it doesn't export the power. It's doing the same thing that the other buffer was doing. Maybe these cables don't like buffers. I I don't know. I don't... Um, It was set to extract, similar to everything else. I just have it now just plugged in for no reason. Um, But, uh, I mean, it works without. So I'm just going to leave it without and just keep going with what's what actually is working. So today we got a lot done. I mean, look at the thing behind us. It may not seem like much, but it is definitely going to help us out here soon. It's gonna be putting in the work, but as always, I wanna give a huge shout out to the sponsor of today's video. I've kind of moved them over here, but I'm kind of excited to see um, what all of our patrons look like and uh, if their usernames actually match their skin, because if they do, if you guys' uh, skin matches, I'm going to be naming some of the sieves that we have. They have little workers inside and you can name tag them later on. And the name tags 
will actually change to the uh, the Minecraft skin. So that's gonna be kind of cool. But anyways, I want to say a huge thanks to the sponsor of today's video, and that's gonna go to Kleb. I uh, I really appreciate that. Thank you so much for your amazing support over on Patreon. And guys, of course, if you're interested in becoming a Patreon yourself. Of course, you can find that down in the description below. Of course, that is the best way to support me and the videos that I make. So, guys, I really appreciate it. Of course, I'll see you in the next episode. If you have subscribed already. Of course, that's a great way to support as well. And also give this video a thumbs up. I'll see you in the next one. And as always, thanks for watching.